So we now know a few more details about the changes that have been recently made to the boiler upgrade scheme to allow air-to-air -air heat pumps and heat batteries to qualify. Now a document was discovered um, by one of my viewers, thank you very much for pointing that out, and uh, it goes through all of the details, it's basically the result of the consultation that um, the government ran um, earlier in the year, and I'll go through a few of the finer points in that document, but the main things to, uh, to let you know about are, um, and in response to some of the questions I got on my previous video, basically you can only get one grant per household. You cannot get both the um, air to water heat pump uh, grant of seven and a half thousand pounds combined with the two and a half thousand pounds for um, air to air and uh, heat batteries. So you can only get one or the other. Uh, that grant um, will always apply to the thing that replaces your main heating source. So if you have a gas boiler, that has to get replaced completely. Um, you can't keep that around and then uh, add air to air to your house, for example, for supplementary heating. You have to completely remove the boiler um, and uh, it has to basically cover all of your heating um, load, or more or less, uh, more details on that uh, later. And the products that you get installed have to be MCS certified. So uh, with those headline figures, uh, let's go into the details and I'll show you the relevant sections of the document. So the first interesting piece of information that I discovered in this document actually relates to air to water heat pumps, which they refer to as hydronic heat pumps in this document. And uh, previously, in order to qualify for the bus grant, you needed to have a heat pump that would replace both the space heating and hot water needs of your house. That seems to be no longer quite so strict. Um, as long as your hydronic uh, heat pump um, is capable of meeting the full uh, space heating demand of the property, um, that's fine um, as, and it can then be installed alone or in combination with other appliances that are incapable of burning fossil fuels. So in other words, I, the, the way I read this, um, it, I, it, I think it suggests that you can basically have a heat pump to do your um, space heating but you can have different hot water uh, technologies as long as it's not fossil fuel based so for example um, immersion heaters or other or other systems that provide hot water so um, yeah that was interesting and not one um, I uh, originally thought was part of this expansion. Related to that and a little bit further down um, in that particular section uh, there's this paragraph which is also very interesting that they uh, will not provide support for heat pumps that provide hot water heating only. So basically you have to be replacing your space heating requirements and uh, no grant will apply to just hot water systems such as um, our mixed heat integrated heat pump cylinder for example. That wouldn't qualify and the reason being um, they uh, say here that basically on average hot water makes up only 20% of a building's heat demand whereas space heating makes up 80% so it's the 80% that they're trying to encourage you um, to, uh, to replace um, and so as long as that's the bit that gets replaced with um, you know, an efficient low carbon technology, that's the bit that they're, that they're mostly concerned about. Um, and, and therefore, no grant will be applicable to just hot water systems. And then in relation specifically to air-to-air -air heat pump systems, or what they call AAHPs, air-to-air -air heat pumps, um, this section uh, describes the grant being um, £2,500, as we discussed in the previous video. But in order to be eligible for it, it needs to provide um, space heating, as I mentioned before, and it would also need to be um, MCS certified and meet uh, the eco design requirements for heating and cooling. I'm not entirely sure what that means. I'm sure we'll find out uh, in due course. Um, but this is very interesting as well. Um, it also suggests that we will allow air-to-air -air heat pumps to be installed alongside other electric appliances that can provide supplementary space or water heating. Now, um, that's an interesting uh, sentence and I'm not entirely sure quite what it means. What I th suspect it means is that when you have an air-to-air -air heat pump system, you can't entirely replace all of your space heating requirements. So for example, with our system, we have air-to-air um, heat pump system that basically covers most of the house except the wet rooms and in the wet rooms we've actually got uh, electric radiators that um, obviously help dry the towels and keep the bathrooms warm so I take that to be something along the lines of what they say here as supplementary space heating and obviously our water he is heated by our Mixergy IHP um, but there are obviously many other um, hot water solutions out there. I've done a whole video about that actually a couple of years ago now. It's quite a while ago. So I expect there's probably even more options available now. But, you know, things like electric boilers that do on-demand hot water or just um, a, an existing hot water cylinder with an immersion 
um, element in it, that, that would all um, count as your supplementary water heating as far as I'm concerned. So um, yeah, it looks like as long as you're basically replacing the majority of your space heating that the air to air heat pump um, would qualify for the grant, obviously as long as it's um, MCS certified and all that other stuff. Um, and of course, uh, along with the other um, mention of replacing your gas boiler entirely or, or other fossil fuel systems, they have to be removed completely. So you can't install uh, an air to air, air to air heat pump system as supplementary heating alongside your gas boiler. You will have to remove the gas boiler completely. You can't just add a couple of units and claim your two and a half thousand pounds. That's pretty clear from this is, uh, is the way I read that. And as far as heat batteries are concerned, this um, also follows the same rules in terms of basically replacing all of your space heating needs. So in order to qualify for the bus grant, um, a, a uh, heat battery would have to be able to provide the full space heat and hot water demand of the property. Now this is interesting, whether alone or in combination with other appliances that are incapable of burning fossil fuels. So once again, you will have to completely replace your gas boiler. But this does suggest that um, if the heat battery could only provide your space heating, that maybe you could then also um, have a separate system to do your hot water. Not That's not completely clear. I believe that might be the case. Um, so yeah, basically they want to, uh, as they mentioned before, they want to maximise the carbon saving, savings by essentially replacing um, all of your, um, as much of your space heating as possible with these appliances. Um, and of course, the any uh, qualifying heat battery would also have to be MCS certified. Currently, there are no guidelines around that. So the current understanding is that heat batteries won't really be included in any of the um, uh, bus grant uh, applications until probably early 2027, late 2026 at the earliest. Um, whereas the air-to-air -air heat pump systems will, are likely to start um, getting rolled out in early 2026. So you've still got a little a little time to wait before you um, are able to apply for a heat battery grant. Um, and uh, currently, nobody really knows what uh, heat batteries they're talking about here. My suspicion is that um, this has been a push from um, companies like Tepio with their zero emission boiler, as I mentioned in the, in my previous video. I think that this is worded very specifically to uh, to um, more or less map exactly to the to the uh, capabilities of the zero emission boiler. So um, yeah, I wonder if they've uh, they're, they're responsible for this in particular. Um, but yeah, that doesn't mean that. Um, other heat batteries wouldn't be um, possible to include as long as you can then replace your um, main space heating with something else. Um, but in that case, you would only get the one grant. So for example, if you had a heat battery to do your hot water and an air-to-air -air heat pump system like we've got to do the space heating, you would only get one lot of the grant um, because uh, you can only um, get the grant for the thing that replaces your space heating, not the thing that replaces your hot water. And then further down, very explicitly, it says in this paragraph, where you've got multiple uh, technologies that could qualify, it's the thing that provides your space heating that qualifies. So if you get a hydronic, that's air to water heat pump system installed, then that would qualify for the £7,500 hydronic heat pump grant, as long as it provides all of your space heating. Um, and you could then supplement with a heat battery that provides your hot water, for example, or any other technology. Um, but if you replaced your um, space heating with air to air or, or a heat battery then that would only qualify for the two and a half thousand pound grant. There is of course a lot more information in that document that I've not gone through here. I've just covered the sort of uh, main salient points that people were asking about in my previous video. I'll put a link in the description to this document so that you can go and check out all of the gory details at your leisure if you are so inclined. Um, but that's it from me today. Hopefully, hopefully you found that useful and interesting and uh, yeah I'll catch you in the next video. Bye for now.